All right, so now that we're here, let's just take a quick step back and let's recall what we were looking for in this problem. We're trying to solve for number two here, show that the energy of the particle is discrete instead of continuous. We've now made it to a point where we can apply the boundary conditions that we solved in problem one, where psi at zero is equal to zero and psi at a is equal to zero. And so we'll use these two conditions and what we'll find is that, yes, indeed, the energy of the particle is discrete instead of continuous. So let's apply these boundary conditions to this intermediate solution that we have below. So for the first one, this is where psi of zero is equal to zero. And so if I take my solution that I have from above, I have then a cosine 2me square root over h bar zero plus b sine 2me square root h bar zero. And so the sine of zero, well that term disappears and that goes to zero. The cosine of zero, that goes to one. That means then that I have psi of zero is equal to zero, which is equal to a. That means then in this case, my constant a is equal to zero. I have no cosine term. Let's look at number two, the second boundary condition. The sine of a is equal to zero. Well, since a is equal to zero, like capital A is equal to zero, then I don't need to write it in anymore. So I only need to write b sine 2me square root over h bar at a. And so in this case, we have to make, or we have to think logically about this solution and how to solve it. So what we have is we have zero is equal to a constant times a sine function. And in this case, if b were to be equal to zero, then I would have a trivial solution. That means then that b cannot be zero. Because if it were, like I said, we'd have a trivial solution. We wouldn't have a solution anymore. That means that it has to be this sine 2me or root 2me over h bar times a has to be equal to zero. And so if we look at a sine function and how it evolves in time, we have a sine of x is basically looks something like this. And sine of x is equal to zero every time it crosses or every time it hits an integer multiple of pi. So here's pi, here's two pi, here's three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi. So anytime we hit pi as a number, the sine of pi, the sine of two pi, an integer number of pi, then we're gonna end up with zero. That means that I can then write that this piece right here, this internal part to the sine function, this must be equal to n pi, so that then I satisfy this boundary condition. That means that I can write a more general, or I can take these two pieces and make them equal to each other. So I have 2me square root over h bar times a is equal to n pi. Now remember again, what we were trying to solve for here was we're trying to show that the energy of the particle is discrete and not continuous. Well then now let's solve for the energy of the particle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides by h bar, I'm gonna divide both sides by a, so I'm gonna get 2me square root is equal to n pi h bar over a. I'm gonna square both sides 2me is equal to n squared pi squared h bar squared over a squared. And then finally, I'm going to now solve for e. e is equal to n squared pi squared h bar squared over 2m a squared. So, does the solution show that the energy is quantized? Absolutely it does. And the piece that tells us so is that it's the fact that it has this n that's included in the solution. Remember, this n is any integer number. It's 1 in case of that it was equal to 1 with this pi, or it's the 2, or it's the 3, or it's the 4, or the 5, the 6 that's written on my sine plot. Because remember, we had to say that the internal part of the sine function, root 2me over h bar times a, had to be equal to an integer multiple of pi so that we can satisfy our boundary condition. So n is then just some number, some positive integer. And because of that, that means that the energy cannot take on a continuous distribution of values. It only can take on values that, by setting n, allows us to set. And so that means that e then becomes multiples of 1 
or 2 squared, or 3 squared, or 4 squared, and on and on and on and on. So yes, the energy of our system is quantized. It is discrete. All right, so let's go back and let's take stock again. We've just finished number two. Show that the energy of the particle is discrete. Yes, indeed it is, because it has that, that n term when we solve for the energy. So then our final thing is to find psi of x for this system. And so all we're going to do is, I'm just going to borrow from this piece right here again, this b sine root 2 me over h bar times a. And I want you to recall when we solved this in the general case, when this was um, a beta, when this term would have been a beta, what we did was is we just took this condition that this root 2 m over e over h bar times a had to be equal to n pi, and that then we just, in the previous case, we just solved for beta. And so that's all I'm going to do here. That means then that for number three, to find the wave function, I'm still going to invoke 2me over h bar times a is equal to n pi. But instead of solving for the energy, which is what we did last time so that we could actually get a term for the energy, I'm simply going to say, I'm simply just going to divide both sides by a. So that means then on the left-hand side, I'm going to get 2me square root over h bar is equal to n pi over a. And so that means then from this um, boundary condition, the one that we have again up here, this psi at a is equal to zero is equal to b sine 2m e square root over h bar times a, I can simply just rewrite that because now I don't need to write the root 2m e over h bar, I can write n pi over a. So that means then that my solution is psi of x is equal to b sine n pi n pi over a times x. And then again, this boundary condition or this, this solution satisfies the boundary conditions that we just talked about a second ago. If x is equal to zero, the sine of zero is zero. I solve for, that's my first boundary condition. If my x is equal to a, then that means then that the a cancels with the a on the bottom of the interior part of this function, and I have the sine of n pi, which again is also equal to zero. And so we would say this, this is, at least up to this point, the solution or the final solution for this problem. Now, of course, we still don't know what b is. We don't know what this constant b out front is, so it's not a complete solution just yet. But we'll get to, a little bit later in this lecture, how we calculate b.